getting ready to can tomato sauce and I've got some Roma tomatoes that I picked a few days ago I let them ripen in the bowl then once they were pretty close to being ripe I stuck them in the refrigerator for about 24 might have been 40, one or two days doesn't matter basically I was just keeping them from getting too soft um, so you're going to need a uh, tomato juicer you're going to need canning jars and lids and here's a little tip a lot of people are complaining about unable to find lids lids have been running about four dollars for 12 and 12 jars with bands and lids around about $7.99 on sale not too hard for me to say just a little bit more money I'm getting more jars you never have enough jars and uh, I don't care to pay a few dollars more to get what I need the other thing you're gonna need you're gonna need a stock pot I prefer stainless steel you can use whatever you got on hand you could use just a normal you know two or four quart pot whatever you've got you're also going to need some salt um, some basil leaves or yeah basil leaves would also be good um, it's kind of optional this is the way I make it and the first thing we're going to do we're going to wash the tomatoes off I basically set up two bowls one on each side of the sink one bowl has the tomatoes I'm going to wash, the other side has the tomatoes I've already washed. I wash them in cold water. All I'm really doing is removing any dirt that may have gotten on them in the garden. We're going to get a paring knife we're actually going to take and all of our tomatoes are going to at the very minimal get quartered and I usually take it and do it in half and then cut the end out I try not to go too deep I just put the waste right there if the tomato is real small, I might only do it in halves, but I generally prefer to do it in quarters. If there's anything on the other end, get rid of it too. And I'm not going to make you watch me do all of these. I'll just do the first few. So this one's actually got a couple bad spots, see it there? We're basically going to cut these bad spots out. Now you don't have to cut too deep because like I said, the outside of the tomato looks bad. The inside of it's fine. So you just want to get rid of the part that is bad on the outside. until you're down to the part of the tomato that's still good then you're just gonna go ahead and quarter it just like you normally would actually a little bit more on the end there I gotta get rid of now we're good Alright, I'll bring you back after I get the rest of these done. So I finally got them all done. Had some more salt. So I've got an empty bowl over there now. Try to adjust this camera. Basically going to pick this coriander up. Kind of give it a couple shakes. Remembered I salted the top of these again. Dump them in the other bowl. Take this one. Just get rid of some of the juice there. Put some more salt on them. Dump them back in to the original bowl. Put some more salt on them. Just 
So we're going to go over to the stove now. Dump the tomatoes into our pan. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add just enough water to cover the tops of the tomatoes. Probably took around 8 to 10 cups. So as you can see, the water just covers the tops of the tomatoes. So now you're going to turn the stove on and bring this to a boil. Once you bring it to a boil, you're going to want to set a timer for one hour and make sure you stir it often. You don't want it to be a rolling boil. You want it to be just bubbles coming up every now and then, but you got to do it for an hour. So when it starts to boil, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Alright, so when you see it start to boil like this, it's not really a rolling boil. That's when you want to set your timer for 60 minutes. Make sure you stir it often. I'll bring you back at the next step. You definitely want to stir this every couple of minutes to make sure the tomatoes aren't sticking to the pan. Because if you scorch your tomatoes, you're pretty much done. There's what it looks like. Timer going off. Now, usually what I do is I'll let this cool down for a few minutes. Then I transfer it to a bowl. Then I take it over to my processing station. And we are going to hope we don't spill it. Because I have actually done that before. Watch out for the splashing hot water on you. Transfer this bowl over to where I'm going to process this tomato juice. So the next thing you're going to do, people do this different ways. I don't care that it's still got a lot of water in it because we're going to boil this off a second time. So all that I do is I take this and just dump it into the hopper, water and all. Now this is going to be, oh I just lost my little thing. This is actually going to be somewhat hard to do. Again, we're going to boil this a second time to get rid of a lot of this water, so I don't care that there's water in it. Okay, once we got it in there like that, now we basically just start processing it. This will go down somewhat on its own to a certain point, and then you'll have to use the hopper, which I've now got to rinse off. Now I've got two of these. One is made by Weston. The other one is made by Johnny Applesauce Maker. Or actually it's made by um, Roots and Branches. It's called the Johnny Applesauce Maker. In all honesty, they're nearly identical. The only difference is how they mount to your table. This one has a clamp. The other one is like suction. I prefer this one over the other one just because it works better with my tables. But everything nearly is identical outside of that. And when I mean identical, like the parts are interchangeable and everything. Boiling the tomatoes actually makes this much easier. I'm going to set this right here for right now. You're going to see that there, there's going to come a time when the waste quits coming out the end. A rubber spatula to kind of like get this to move downward I usually take and wipe off the screens too so now I gotta move this bowl slightly forward because I gotta take this part here off and basically I wanna put all the waste inside that bowl and put this back on. So once I've got that back on, 
I'm going to pour this back in there because you're going to run this through a couple of different times. You're basically going to keep running it through until your waste looks mostly dry. And you'll notice that each time you do this, it gets just a little bit drier. And you can see now that the pulp has stopped coming out again. So usually what I do is I take this off, put it right like that. I will take and now clean this off the best I can and try to get as much of the pulp off of the screen. I'll end up taking the screen off here in just a second. I just want to get the bulk of it right now. And that's probably about the best I'm going to get it. So now we take this back over to the stove and we boil this again for another hour. Dumping this back in the bowl and the pan on it. Nothing left. Turn the stove back on. Bring it to a boil again. And once you bring it to a boil, once it starts to boil, set your timer for 60 minutes. I'll bring you back then. You're going to want to stir this often also. I usually stir it about every five minutes or so. Okay, I wanted to show this to you. One thing you're going to notice as you're boiling this down the second time to make it thicker is that it's been in there now for about 30 minutes. I started on high and you can see I'm nearly on low now. Um, you're going to have to adjust your temperature as the time goes on because as it gets thicker, it takes less heat to boil it. So you're going to have to stir it more often. You're going to have to, you know, reduce the temperature and keep a close eye on it. Now, I don't actually like my tomato sauce to be too thick. Right now, it's still a little runnier than I would like for it to be. Definitely. But uh, probably in the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to call this good, even though it didn't go for the full hour. One thing that you want to do while you're waiting on this to boil down the second time is clean up after yourself. Trust me, you know it's a slow day on the homestead when I'm cleaning up after myself. But at the same time, trust me, you do not want to get hardened tomato peel and seeds off of your dishes. So I've already rinsed out everything, got the bulk of it off. All I've got left to do is clean up this little bit in a sink, clean up this little bit in this bowl, and I'm done. Everything else is already cleaned up. Okay, so the next thing you want to do, you want to go ahead and start with your jars already sanitized. If you were going to do this in a pressure canner, you would go ahead and have the jars up to room temperature. But I'm not going to do them in a pressure canner. Um, I also decided to use pint jars instead of quarts. I didn't have as much of this sauce as I thought I was going to have. So for the next step, you need a ladle. And I'll show you two other things. You can either use citric acid or lemon juice. I've always used citric acid. I got plenty on hand. I've also got plenty of lemon juice. Another thing I'm going to use are some basil. Now this is dried basil and the way that I do this is I do a quarter teaspoon because you got to remember this is dehydrated basil. It's not like leaves. So this is going to be pretty strong taste being dehydrated. So about a quarter of a teaspoon of basil in each jar and also about a quarter teaspoon of citric acid in each jar. Now I'm going to do this two jars at a time because I'm really not sure how much of this juice and sauce I'm going to have. Now the next thing, the amount of head space you leave is dependent on the method you're going to use for canning. It also depends on the size of the jar. So if you're going to do pressure canning, they usually call for a quarter inch head space. 
I'm doing what's called a hot pack and I'm going to use a half inch head space. So look it up for your canning method. I'm basically going to use a ladle Add this to the jars. That looks like pretty close to a half inch. Then going to put the band and lid on it. Now this is kind of the important part for this method. Put this upside down on the table and cover it up with a blanket or something like that. I actually used a jacket because it's just what I had handy. I did, forgot to run upstairs and get my wool blanket. So what the jacket does or the blanket or whatever you're going to use does is keeps that jar from cooling down too quick. So we're going to do that with the other jars also. There's not enough for another jar. Underneath this jacket, there's my five jars, pint jars. I'm actually going to get another jacket and put over that. So now I've taken it and made it so that this will take longer to cool down. And that is the key to getting these jars to seal. Okay, the next day, after you take your blankets off or whatever you seal the jars with, turn them upright, check to make sure that all of the lids sealed. If any of them click or pop, they're not sealed. Then the final step, I usually put the year and what it is. Now, I actually put tomato sauce because I also make tomato juice. And although I only got five pints initially, this is what I call the teaser tomatoes. So you always get a few that ripen earlier than the rest, and that's what these are. So the next ones I'll actually split into tomato sauce and tomato juice and salsa, and uh, I'll get those canned up, and I'll probably do a video on those too.